All right, this is timing code three on page 93 of the online administration manual. And this is triple time over multiple days. This is multiple day testing. Follow these guidelines for examinees authorized to test over multiple days. These verbal instructions are written for administering one test per session over multiple days. If you administer more than one test in, one, in the same session, adjust the instructions accordingly. Each test must be completed in one session without stopping the clock. If you choose to administer more than one test per session, you may allow examinees a break between tests. And so there's some related tasks there, exit testing for multiple days, sitting on page 59, directing examinees to log out of test nav and resume testing for multiple day sittings. So you're going to need this for multiple day testing. All right, so let's look at administering the English test. Administering the English test, timing code three. Do not continue until you have completed the verbal instructions from the beginning. See all timing begin begins here on page 73. So you should have already done page 73 or the information begins in 73 and now you are at this point. Number one, when everyone is ready, say your computer will keep the official time for your examination. There will be a countdown timer located in the top right corner of your screen that will tell you the time remaining for the test you are working on. When five minutes remain on each test, a message will appear on your screen to serve as a warning before time is up. When time runs out, you must submit your test according to the instructions on your screen. If you finish before time is up and you have reviewed your answers, you may submit your test early. Once you submit your test, you will not be able to return to it. If you finish early, sit quietly. You may not read or engage in any other activity that could distract others still testing. It is to your advantage to answer every question. Do you have any questions? Number two, address questions, then say, listen carefully. Do not do not use your student authorization ticket as scratch paper. I will now give you a sheet of scratch paper. Write your name and today's date at the top of the sheet. Do not share your scratch paper with anyone. If you need more scratch paper during testing, raise your hand. I will collect your ticket and all scratch paper before you are dismissed. All right, page 94, item three. Give each examinee a sheet of scratch paper, then say, you should be on the screen that says English. Read the section directions and look up when you are finished. Number four, say. Now, this is where you have to know which students you have. If they're text-to-speech students, the time will say 180 minutes. If they're not Texas speech students, it will say 135 minutes. So your room, your test coordinator uh, would have assigned you to either text to speech or those students that are not text to speech. You cannot have both in the same classroom because the timing is different. All right. So now that I've said that, let's go to number four. So you're going to say one of those. You're going to say either uh, you have 135 minutes or you will say 180 minutes for examinees using uh, text-to-speech, all right? Okay, so you have 135 minutes or 180 uh, for examinees using text-to-speech to work on the English test. When I provide the seal code, enter it and then select the start button. This will start the timer on your computer. If you have any difficulties entering your seal code, raise your hand. On your administrative computer, look up the seal code for English and then say the seal code for English is and you may enter it now and begin. All right. Now, as the students are working on the English test, you must do the following. Verify that all examinees were able to start the test. The second thing you have to do is complete your seating diagram. 
So you and your room supervisor would have started completing the room form, which uh, in your case would say accommodation supports online. So we're going to scroll to the part where where you have to complete the seating diagram. So here's the seating diagram on this page. So notice it says this complete blocks one through four during testing. So here's one, you have to determine, you have to state the seating type. The two is uh, partitions between examinees, yes or no. Number three was the distance between, between examinees. So you may need to make sure that it's three to three between uh, shoulders and uh, five feet, um, uh, if minimum five feet if no partition. So there's no partitions between um, head to head, it's five feet. All right, and then number four, this is where you would draw the diagram. So, so make sure you draw the diagram according to what that second bullet says. In block four, sketch the room setup and enter the name of each examinee to indicate the workstation where he or she is. So if you leave the name off and your room, your test coordinator decide to go back and, and do it, which they would know where the students were anyway, the test, the students uh, scores um, or the student's test may not be scored, could, will probably not be scored. So it still could be scored, it may not be scored, it depends on the analyst. All right, so be very careful. Make sure <clears throat> when you draw the diagram that the student's names are in each of those boxes. Now this is what it says, show the direction of examinees are facing any partition dividers and walls. So you must do all this. And then this part here says, see the administration manual for acceptable seating arrangements. On page 15 is where you'll see the seating arrangement examples for online testing. Um, your room, your test coordinator would have determined in advance what the room setup would be. So, so at this point, um, hopefully it's set up the way it needs to be set up. Um, so, so, but the, these are acceptable arrangements and these are unacceptable arrangements. So make sure, make sure your room setup is this way. When you draw your diagram, make sure it is one of these acceptable arrangements. If it's unacceptable, it is a possibility that the uh, test scores uh, or the test will not be scored. All right, so that was the second bullet. Number three, move around the room to monitor for prohibited behavior. And number four, monitor examinee progress on your administrative computer. If it seems an examinee is not progressing, such as is on the same item number for a long time, check with the examinee to make sure there are no computer items. So let's look at what, what this would look like on your computer and where to find it on your computer. Okay, so on your administrative computer, when students are working on the uh, current test, you will see green, so it will say active. So notice that both of those students in this example are active, so they're working on this test. So if you want to see where which item they're on or which items they've worked on, all you do is go to, see where it says student test status, click on the word active right here. So when you click on the word active, it will bring up another page. And there's two arrows on the top, diagonally, just increase the size, and there you are. Okay, so so notice that um, in this, let me go ahead and so see this little button here it says refresh. So for refresh, um, all right, this is what, what you see. So notice that, that for this student, um, they're currently working on test two, which is the um, which is the English test, and these are the items they've answered so far. So no other items have been answered. So session section two is, is English. Then when you scroll down, you'll see section three. Actually, um, they're on section three right now. So so section three is is math, and then they continue on. OK, so so this is how you can determine um, what items they've answered. All right. So remember, if they're on Section three and so let's say they are in Section three because there's some items marked. Notice they've answered item one. They've answered item two. They left item three blank and so on. 
All right, here are the timestamps right here. So that's the time in which they entered the response. They submitted the response for that item. Um, and notice that in a previous test, these are some of the items they, they left off. So notice whenever, whenever you click on this, you have access to how they, what they did on section two in previous sections. So here's section two, which is, which is English. Section three is um, math. Section four would be um, reading. And then section five would be uh, science. So um, if, if you are currently on this section right here, you can tell where the students are. And then there are the timestamps right here. So if you want to go to another student, uh, let's go to the, to the top. You see this little X button right here. Let's go ahead and exit. And don't forget, just keep refreshing because this does not update automatically. So you have to keep refreshing to see where the student is. So when you keep refreshing, then this page will be updated. You're just going to have to scroll to the section you're on. So if you're on section three, you have to scroll until you find section three. All right. So you got to keep refreshing and then scrolling down. So if you look at the other student, so this is the other student right here, and do the same thing. So let's expand this. So this is section two. And then let's say currently they're working on section three, which is math. So this is what they've answered in math and, un and did not answer in math. And this is where they are. These are the timestamps. So in about 10 minutes, let's say you want to come back. You remember, you must, you must refresh for it to constantly keep updating, OK? And then up here, it, it tells you which items, how many items were answered, um, how many items did not have any response, how many items were visited, and then um, um, how many are remaining. Now, this is for the test, the entire test. So all the sections, all five sections. All right, so remember, section one is the preliminary stuff that, that they would do before they begin the English test. All right, and so you just X out, and that's how you do this. All right, so that's how you uh, can determine the progress of each student, which is clicking on the word active next to each student. All right, so now back in the manual, number seven, take appropriate steps, uh, appropriate next steps. All right, and then, um, then it says this, if you are continuing in the same sitting, if you continue in the same settings, number eight, allow examinees to have a break and then proceed to the next test. So basically, if the students have finished the English test and you are um, you're done either for the day or you're continuing the next day or you're starting again the same day, make sure you, you uh, take appropriate steps. So number number eight, uh, this part here, if you're continuing in the same sitting or same sitting, so you're, you're going to take the math test which for triple time, usually what happens, you do English on one day and then math on another day. And then test coordinators try and do um, reading and science in the same day. Um, so make sure you know what when these, these sections are given on which days. So if you're Continuing in the same sitting. So in other words, if you're going to go to the math test and allow examiners to have a break, then proceed to the next test. Notice there's there's no uh, minutes here, but I would assume that they're talking about a 15 minute break. All right. Number nine, remind examinees they will be dismissed if they access phones or other electronic devices during the break. They may not eat or drink anything in the test room. All right. If you are dismissing examinees for the day, so in other words, you're going to come back. You're going to come back on, um, let's say, tomorrow to start the math test. Then you're going to do this. You're going to instruct them to log out of test nav. Examinee screen should say sign out complete. Examinee status should be exited. So let's see what this. All right, I thought I was going to be able to show you how it would look, but um, it's just not working. So number 10, remember, you do have to instruct them to log out of test nav. 
And then once they do that successfully, it will say, the examining screens will say, sign out complete. And then if you go back to the, um, to your administrative computer and you look at the test session status, it will then say exited. So for example, our two that we're working with notices test session status here says exited. Okay, so then number 11, you're going to collect all student authorization tickets and scratch paper. Make sure you collect it for each person. So the student authorization ticket and the scratch paper together for each student. Number 12, inform examinees of the date and time for the next test and say, remember, discussing or sharing test content or answers is prohibited, including on social media. And then 13, dismiss the examinees. And then 14, lock the test session in Pearson Access. It says lock the test session, not stop, excuse me. Lock the test session. So when I go to lock the test session, let's go back. When I go to lock the test session, um, uh, right here, you're going to go lock the test session. Notice is in progress. So I'm going to go ahead and lock it. Um, it says in progress, but notice the on the word exited right here, there's a padlock. All right, so there's a padlock on the word exited. So I've locked the test session. You're going to stop the test session after the fourth test. So it's after the students have taken a fourth test where you're going to stop the test session. All right, so make sure, make sure you follow directions carefully. So um, after you dismiss the examinees, make sure you go back and lock the test. Um, Stopping the test session occurs after the fourth test is taken. All right, so on the second day, the students are going to return. And for the math test, uh, again, this is time in code three. We're on page 94. It says this, use the following table to determine the next step. If you're in the same sitting, skip to test three. If you're in another sitting, so another day, then part A, follow the instructions to resume testing for multiple day sitting and then proceed to step two. So let me remind you what that is. So I'm going to go back to, um, to uh, um, PA next, and we got to resume. So right now it's padlock and it says exited. So to resume, if it's a lot of students, you're going to click on all the students here. If it's just one or two like it is here, you can just click the down arrow and click the word resume. And same thing here, click the word resume. So we're going to resume. So make sure you resume so you can click all the students and you're going to go to task and you see where it says resume student test. Click on that then go to start and then uh, let's say still turning and then you can click on the top box to highlight all of them and then click the word resume. And now right here it went from exited to resumed. So let's go ahead and exit. And uh, now the students are able to take the test. But remember, the padlock is still there, right? So you got to make sure you unlock the test. So we have to unlock the test. So you got to make sure you do that, because if, if it doesn't, the students will get a message that says the test is locked. And so you would need to unlock the test. All right, so now the students are ready to continue on with the test. So let's go back to the manual. All right, so let's follow step two now. So here's step two. Begin by begin this sitting by saying, please remember the same instructions concerning prohibited behavior apply today as they did when you, as they did when read to you on day one, and you may not handle or access cell phones or other electronic devices, even if they are powered off until you leave the test site. Also remember that watches must be removed and placed face up on the desk. Do you want me to read the instructions to you again? So if someone says yes, read them again from all timing begins here on page 73. Number three, continue by saying you should be on the screen that says mathematics. Please read the section directions and look up when you're finished. All right. Now, notice that nowhere in here did, did it indicate giving them the um, authorization ticket. So make sure you do that. So so before you continue on with this, um, with number four, make sure the students um, have their authorization tickets. 
So, so remember that on test one, it told them not to write on the authorization ticket. So if they did, you cannot give them that authorization ticket that they wrote on. So you have to give them a new authorization ticket. So give them a new authorization ticket and a scratch paper and tell them to put their, their name and date on the top of that scratch paper. All right, so, so the, reason, the reason they were told for multiple day testing not to write in the authorization authorization ticket was so that um, they could use the same authorization ticket for today because they've got to sign back on, right? So in other words, in other words, when they log into test net, all right, when they when they log into test net, they're going to need their username and password from the authorization ticket. So you have to give them their authorization ticket. Now notice it did not say that in the directions anywhere in here. So um, just make sure you do that and give them uh, scratch paper and tell them not to write on that authorization ticket. Do not do not write on that authorization ticket because they're going to use it for the reading and signs for the next sitting. All right. OK, if you have any questions on that, please make sure you ask your test coordinator. All right. So you gave them the authorization ticket. You gave them a uh, scratch paper and you told them to put their their name and date on the scratch paper. Make sure the authorization ticket, if it was written on the previous sitting, you do not give them that same authorization ticket. Give them a clean authorization ticket. All right, so let's go in number four. I'm gonna bring that up. All right, so number four. Number four, continue by saying, all problems on the math test can be solved without a calculator. However, you're allowed to use a calculator in this test and may get it out now. Or you may use the online calculator available in the test. You're responsible for knowing if your calculator is permitted. If you use a prohibited calculator, you will be dismissed and your test will not be scored. Do not share your calculator with another examinee. Do not connect your calculator in any way to the computer. If you need to use your backup calculator, raise your hand. You may have only one calculator in your desk or an operation at a time. If your calculator has games or other functions, you may not use them during the test. Keep your calculator flat on your desk. Are there any questions? Number five, address questions, then continue by saying, you have 180 minutes to work on the math test. If you finish before time is up and you have reviewed your answers, you may submit your test early. Once you submit your test, you will not be able to return to it. When I provide the seal code, enter it and then select the start button. This will start the timer on your computer. If you have any difficulties entering your seal code, raise your hand. And then number six, you would go to your administrative computer look up the seal code for math and then say the seal code for math is and then you may enter it uh, now and begin. All right, so while students are taking the math test, you need to be doing the following. You need to verify that all examinees were able to start the test. You need to be able to move around the room to monitor for prohibited behavior and then refer to the ACT calculator policy and check all calculators periodically throughout testing. Dismiss any examinees who, use a prohibit, who uses a prohibited calculator. They will not be allowed to take any other test. So your test coordinator would have given you the calculator policy and the students um, should have received one of these um, from their my ACT possibly, but but they should be aware of the calculator policy. Um, so make sure you know, uh, for example, the following types of calculators are prohibited. So here are some Texas instruments that are prohibited, Hewlett Packard calculators that are prohibited, some types, and then Casio as well. And then all of the information down here about some other prohibited calculators. So make sure you're walking around and checking for prohibited calculators. Notice where it says testing staff is responsible for monitoring during the test session to ensure examinees are using only permitted calculators. And then the second bullet here 
dismissing any examinees found to be using a prohibited calculator during testing. And then there's a section on the following types of calculator permitted, to, permitted but only after they are modified as noted. And then again, as, as you did with the English test, the next bullet says you can monitor examinee progress on your administrative computer. If it seems an examinee is not progressing, um, check with the examinee to make sure there are no computer problems. And then number eight, take the appropriate next steps. If you are continuing in the same setting, which you probably will not because math is a is a 180 minutes, three hours, um, so, but if you are, then allow examinees to have a break and then proceed to the next test. Number 10, remind examinees they will be dismissed if they access phones or other electronic devices during the break. They may not eat or drink anything in the test room. If you are dismissing examinees, number 11, instruct them to log out of test nav. Examinee screens should say sign out complete and examinee status should be exited. Then you would collect the student authorization tickets and the scratch paper. Um, so, so hopefully they didn't write on the student authorization tickets, but if they did, um, make sure you let your, your test coordinator know that students wrote, that which students wrote on there so the test coordinator can print a new student authorization ticket to be used for the next test, for the next sitting. 13, inform examinees of the date and time for the next test and then say, remember discussing or sharing test content or answers is prohibited, including on social media. Then you would dismiss examinees and then you would lock the test in PA next. Now, let me go one and say, so, so the next step you got to take is you got to bring all this information you collected, the authorization tickets and the scratch paper, to the test coordinator because the test coordinator has to keep this in a safe place. Okay, so so then the next day you go back and you get the student authorization tickets, not the scratch paper that's been used. The test coordinator is going to keep that, but the authorization tickets uh, to give to you the next day. All right, so that is number uh, the last part, number 15. Make sure you lock the test um, in PA next. Then the reading test for day three, um, which will probably be a different sitting. So let's go ahead and read this part. So you're going to resume testing just like you did for the math test. And then you can proceed to step two. So then you just follow directions as you did. So you're going to do step two, step three, and then uh, step four, make sure they understand that they have 105 minutes to work on the reading test. And the timer will say 105 when, when they go on. And then um, you're going to give them the seal code, and then they're going to start. So the next page, um, so you tell them the seal code, and then they enter it now, and then they begin. So during the reading test, make sure you verify all examinees were able to start the test. You move around the room to monitor for prohibited behavior, and you monitor student progress on your administrative computer. And then if you're, once, once they end, um, once they end, you're going to, you, well, first of all, you get to determine the next step. You're going to continue the same setting, which you probably will for, for the last two tests, then allow examinees a break, and then proceed to the next test. If they do get a break, if you are going to the next test, remind the examinees they will be dismissed if they access phones or other electronic devices during the break. They may not eat or drink anything in the test room. If you're going to dismiss and give the science test on that fourth day, then you're going to instruct them to log out of test nav. And just as before, the examinee screen should say sign out complete. Examinee status should be exited. You're going to collect the student authorization tickets and scratch paper. And then inform the examinees of the date and time for the next day. And then say, remember, discussing or sharing test content or answers is prohibited, including on social media dismiss examinees and lock the test if you're going to test science on the next day. Okay, and so then the last test is science. So uh, for science, probably it's going to be in the same day as, as the reading. So you're probably going to do the first one in the same sitting, skip to test three. But if it is a different day, then make sure you go to step two. But don't forget, you're going to have to resume 
testing if you did uh, if you did or if you are doing science on the on the fourth day. Um, but if it's right after the English, I'm sorry, right after the reading on that third day, then skip two and then just go to three. So um, notice number three says you should be on the screen that says science. Read the section directions and look up when you're finished. So we're on page 98. So then number four says this when the appropriate read the appropriate instruction below. So remember, we, we do we do not do right writing. So this is no writing here. So you're going to say you're going to use the first bullet. So you're going to say you have 105 minutes to work on the science test. If you finish before time is up and you have reviewed your answers, you may submit your test early. Once you submit your test, you will be logged out of TestNav. So it is on that last test where students are automatically logged out of TestNav. So remember in the in the first test, second test and third test, you had if you're doing a sitting next sitting on a different day, the next test on a different day, you had to tell them to log out. So on the last test, though, the computer automatically logs them out once once they um, have used up all 105 minutes. Number five, when I provide the seal code, enter it and then select the start button. This will start the time on your computer. If you have any difficulties entering your seal code, raise your hand and then um, Give them the seal code for science from your administrative computer and then let them start. During the science test, you need to do the following. You need to verify all examinees were able to start the test. You need to move around the room to monitor for prohibited behavior. And then you're going to monitor examinee progress in your administrative computer. If it seems an examinee is not progressing, check with the examinee to make sure there are no computer problems. And then number eight, you need to take the appropriate steps. If you are administering, um, if you are administering the ACT no writing, you're going to do number nine, which is proceed to the end, the last test and dismiss examinees. So remember, you don't do writing. So that's where you're going to go. So so once the students are finished, you're going to go to end the last test and dismiss examinees. So you're not going to do anything that talks about writing. OK. All right. So that's on page 99, the bottom of page 99 and the last test and dismiss examinees timing code three. Number one, when examinees submit the final test, they are automatically logged out of test nav. Examinee test status will be completed. Check to be sure that each examinee screen says sign out complete. Note: all examinees must be logged out of test nav before examinees can be dismissed. Number two, when you're certain that all examinees are logged out of test nav, continue by saying, attention, I will now collect your student authorization ticket and scratch paper. They will be picked up individually. Do not pass them in. Please remain quietly in your seat until I give you further instructions. Remember, you may not access your cell phone or other electronic devices until you leave the test site. Number three, Collect all student authorization tickets and scratch paper. Do not allow examinees to handle the tickets or scratch paper of other examinees. Keep each examinee scratch paper and student authorization ticket together with the examinee's ticket on top of the scratch paper. Do not collect tickets and scratch paper in separate stacks. Number four, count to be sure you have a ticket for every examinee and have accounted for all scratch paper matching multiple sheets to the examinee if necessary. Do not dismiss any examinee until you have verified that the number of student authorization tickets collected equals the number distributed. And number five, after all tickets and scratch paper have been have been collected, say one of the following. So we're going to do the one that says no writing, the first bullet. If you created a My ACT account and entered your student code, you will receive an email when your scores are posted to your account. If you have not yet created your account and entered your student code, you have two days to complete this process. Your score report will be mailed in approximately three to eight weeks. Remember, discussing or sharing test content or answers is prohibited, including on social media. Be sure you have all your belongings, 
please be quiet in the halls, you're dismissed. And then number six, you're going to stop the test session in PA Next and return all materials to the test coordinator. So this time, when you go to PA Next, um, and and uh, this is not a good example because it says resumed, but but um, all of this should say completed. So all of these should say completed. If it says it's completed, then you click on stop session. So remember, in the previous test for multiple day sittings, you you lock the test. At the very end, on the last test, you are then going to click on stop session. But in order to stop the session, all of these have to say completed or marked complete all right and so that should that is the end of um testing for uh timing code three